so while describing the calculation of time uh, maitreya is also describing the situation of life on different planets when we talk of life always there is the consideration of the life span how many years or what length of time a person can live in a particular body so from the shrimad bhagavatam we can understand that the duration of life is not the same for everyone all the different types of living entities and uh, those on higher planets they have a different duration of life so here in uh, the verse we recited it is particularly mentioned that uh, the life durations of the residents of three different kinds of planets bhuloka bhuvar loka and swarga loka or swar loka in the gayatri mantra we chant these three uh, names of the planetary systems bhuhu bhuvaha suvaha so on the bhuloka the earthly planetary system the human beings live for a duration of maximum 100 years this 100 years is calculated according to a certain uh, time measurement what is that one year is the time it takes for the sun to go round the earth one complete rotation the movement of the sun is uh, diminishing the life duration of every living being so human beings can live maximum 100 years and those years are calculated according to the uh, earthly uh, uh, movement on the earth planet now in the next higher planetary system bhuvar loka this pitra loka residents the uh, pitra loka residents their a uh, duration is different because their calculation is our uh, 15 days is uh, their one day and similar duration is their night so our one month on the earth planet is one complete day and night for the residents of pitraloka now if you go still higher the heavenly planets where the devatas live heavenly planets their time calculation is even more different than that of the pitraloka also what is the calculation our 6 months is their one day and our uh, their night duration is another 6 months so one complete year on the earth planet is just one day and night for the devatas so if you offer worship to ganesha once a year on ganesh chaturthi bhadrapada masa shukla paksha chaturthi ganesha is receiving every day he is thinking you are worshiping him every day 
This is the relativity of time. So, uh, Vidura is telling, so far you have described the durations of time on these three planetary systems. What is that? Pitra Deva Manushyanam Ayuhu, the duration of life or the time scale on these three categories of planets. Manushya is the earthly planet, the human beings, and Pitra Loka is the next higher planet, and Deva Loka is the next higher planet. These are generally called the three worlds. Uh, three worlds generally, Bhur, Bhuva, Svaha. But there are other greatly learned living entities who are living beyond the range of a kalpa. A kalpa is the duration of time on Brahma Loka, calculated as Kalpa is a day of Brahma. Same duration is his night. So two Kalpas make one complete day and night cycle for Brahma. So what is this Kalpa? This Kalpa calculation will be given in the next few verses, but it is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Sahasra Yuga Pariyantam Aharyad Brahmano Viduhu. Brahma's day is Sahasra Yuga, uh, 1000 cycle of our four Yugas. Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dvapar Yuga, Kali Yuga. Cycle of these four Yugas multiplied 1000 times is just day time for Brahma. And similar duration is this night. So by this calculation, Brahma's day and night is very, 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 very long as compared to duration of our uh, day and night. We can't even uh, imagine, by any stretch of imagination, we cannot uh, conceive what is Brahma's uh, time scale. So definitely, those living on Brahma Loka, they are not affected by what is happening in the human society except for their mercy, because of which they may uh, try to give some knowledge or show some compassion and try to help some suffering living entities. Otherwise, uh, the residents of Brahmaloka, greatly learned personalities, were very, very exalted personalities, they are totally unaffected by what is happening on this earth. All our politics, all our great calamities, our great achievements, our big scams, they are hardly affected by it. Just like we on the earth, we human beings, we don't take note of some small creatures who live a few hours. But within those few hours, they have a whole lifespan. They are hundred years, they are living. They are born, they grow, they reproduce, then they have got so many activities, they have colonies, the scientists have studied ant colonies, uh, bee colonies, so many things they study, social uh, setup of different creatures lower than humans. 
but it is not of any significance to the human beings primarily because they have no understanding of spiritual life so however much nicely they may be organized they may be working ultimately all their activities are defeated when when death comes death means all these material achievements are completely finished just like on the earth also among the human beings we keep hearing oh so and so person he did something very wonderful materially big achievement but after he dies it's completely forgotten let's say in this very place tiruvannamayu 10000 years back somebody was living and having a whole program material program ambition may might have been greatly learned person might have been very charitable might have been very very honest might have been very handsome very learned whatever now what about that person he is completely forgotten he is completely forgot what he did what he achieved everything is lost finished even if they had erected some memorial in his honor they erect no sometimes after the person passes away in the name of that person or his statue or some plaque dedicated to him even that is completely destroyed and gone that's all finished over gone so nothing will endure kala time eternal time so therefore we should understand the power of control by the supreme lord through this kala this is very important for any transcendentalist or spiritualist to understand this <coughs> kala will finish off everything just like children they are very busy with some uh, playing and sometimes they take that sport or playing or games to be something very serious but when they grow up what is the value of all that they did while they were playing it's of no consequence at all no consequence at all finished over gone so similarly when we consider that we have to pass on we have to quit this body then what happens to all our achievements all our endeavors all our learning what happens to all that what is the value of that after we pass away that is what we should consider think about so therefore vidura's inquiry is about even those who are beyond living beyond one kalpa brahmaloka residents for them this whole kalpa which is millions of years even according to the calculation of the demigods millions of years they for them it is just day and night and will be described further at the end of brahma's day before brahma's night begins there is a partial dissolution of the whole universe 
స్వర్గ లోక అండ్ బిలో ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ఈస్ సబ్మర్జ్డ్ ఇన్ వాటర్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ఈస్ సబ్మర్జ్డ్ ఇన్ వాటర్ అండ్ ఇట్ రిమైన్స్ సబ్మర్జ్డ్ ఫర్ ద డ్యూరేషన్ ఆఫ్ బ్రహ్మాస్ నైట్ ఎంటైర్ నైట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ కంప్లీట్లీ సబ్మర్డ్ రిమైన్స్ దట్ వే నో బడి కెన్ డూ ఎనీథింగ్ అబౌట్ ఇట్ neither the residents of the upper planets the brahmaloka and other planets like that they don't even uh, bother they go to sleep they are sleeping it's their night whereas all those living beings below on swargaloka and below swargaloka everybody is dead and gone finished they are not even alive for some welfare activity to happen oh there is one big flood that has happened like tsunami came and that uh, there was a uh, flood in december four days heavy rains or overflow, overflowing of the river so so much relief work and all that nobody is even alive to do any relief work here and the ones who are living they are sleeping no consequence for them so why should we waste our time in all these trivial unnecessary activities now you understand the perspective of bhagavatam what should we consider seriously we should consider the spiritual life very seriously that which is beyond this body beyond this planet even beyond the heavenly planets and even beyond brahma loka eternal what is of eternal value that is what we should consider and here in this uh, other words i read 17th verse Uh, vidura is describing maitreya as spiritually powerful personality because he is spiritually powerful he can understand the movements of eternal time which is the controlling form of the supreme personality of god the supreme lord is completely controlling everyone every planet every universe every living being simply in the form of kala it's an energy kala time is an energy of the supreme lord and controlling everybody the duration of life in a particular form or body is determined by kala flowing there is no uh, stoppage there is no alteration possible there is no adjustment that can be done to kala nothing when bhishma was uh, preparing to leave his body after, after the end of the battle of kurukshetra then bhishma was recollecting how much suffering the pandavas had to undergo even though they were very very righteous they were honest they were sincere they were strict followers of dharma so bhishma was recollecting that even though they were so very righteous they were followers of dharma still they had to undergo so much of tribulation so bhishma was uh, thinking that what is the cause of their so much suffering in spite of being generally a person suffers because of sinful activities sinful reactions but the pandavas did not suffer because of sinful reactions this is very important to note the pandavas did not suffer due to sinful reactions 
they were very strict followers of dharma so the bhagavatam helps us understand the secret behind this suffering of the pandavas so bhishma says the suffering of the pandavas is due to kala eternal time what is that suffering due to eternal time it is ordained by the supreme lord it is ordained by krishna therefore brahma says in the 10th canto of the bhagavatam there is a prayer offered by brahma to krishna in the 14th chapter brahma says tattenu kampam su samikshamano bhunjan evatma kritam vipakam he says devotees of krishna brahma says pure devotees of krishna they accept even suffering as due to the mercy of krishna tat te anukampam anukampa means compassion te anukampam your compassion oh my dear krishna your devotees consider even suffering as due to your mercy because pure devotees have no karma no bad karma to suffer their life is completely in the hands of krishna so pandavas are pure devotees so they don't have to suffer any karma then why do they suffer because of the mercy of krishna and brahma says how do they take this suffering bhunjan evatma kritam vipakam they agree to undergo the tribulations the distress the suffering considering that it is all due to my own past misdeeds my own past misdeeds krishna is not responsible for my suffering why am i suffering even though i am a pure devotee because of my own past misdeeds while the truth is that once a devotee surrenders to krishna krishna completely nullifies all sinful reactions krishna says this in the bhagavad gita no sarva dharman parityajya mamekam sharanam vraja aham tvam sarva papebhyo mokshayishyami ma shuchaha do not fear do not worry i will completely uh, free you from all sinful reactions completely when you fully surrender to me so the pandavas or pure devotees are fully surrender to krishna so they have no karma left to suffer no karma still by the will of the lord if they have to undergo any tribulation they understand the lord as a higher purpose the lord has a different purpose through the pure devotees the lord is teaching us that while you are in the material world you have to suffer the reactions of your past activities good and bad enjoyment we all welcome but suffering nobody wants so even if you become righteous dharmic still the suffering due to sinful reactions won't 
just go away and according to kala the suffering has to be uh, experienced and while one is actually uh, trying to execute uh, dharma follow principles of dharma then there are further reactions which one accumulates so it's a vicious cycle of action and reaction and even if one is very careful to avoid sinful activities the nature of this material world is such that accidentally or otherwise inadvertently inattentively somehow even the most pious person commits some sinful activity that you will study when you study the bhagavatam the life of the devatas so many devatas indra uh, varuna vidyadharas uh, then uh, uh, yakshas so many they are divine natured persons they strictly try to follow all the principles of dharma but still they commit mistakes they are bewildered by illusion they are carried away by some pride so the only way krishna is teaching us through the examples of all these great personalities even even big big sages saintly persons once yamaraj was cursed by one mandavya muni this muni was very very powerful very greatly learned but he became angry against yamaraj and he cursed yamaraj so cursing yamaraj is not proper at all it's not proper at all but this mandavya muni he lost his control over anger krodha and he cursed yamaraj to become uh, to take birth on the earth as the son of a shudra and it's a nature of devotees that even though they are faultless they accept the curse parikshit maharaj he was faultless but he was cursed to die within 7 days he accepted but the result of devotees accepting even some curse is that the lord specially protects them so yamaraj was born as vidura and he got an opportunity to participate in krishna's leela on the earth see the wonderful way devotees are protected by the lord vidura as vidura yamaraj is getting a opportunity to participate in krishna's past times similarly parikshit maharaj he was cursed to die in 7 days but what did he do 7 days he sat and heard shrimad bhagavatam and he became completely absorbed in thought of krishna 
And at the end of Bhagavatam, hearing Bhagavatam, he is telling Shukadeva Goswami that now I am not afraid of any snake or even death itself. I am completely absorbed in thought of Krishna. So according to the scriptures, if one is absorbed in thought of Krishna at the time of death, then what is the result of that? One directly goes to Krishna Loka. Directly goes to Krishna Loka. So, Parikshit had nothing to bother about. Some snake bird is going to come and bite and as a result of that he is going to die. He is not bothered about it. So he is fully protected by Krishna. Krishna sent Shukadeva Goswami to Parikshit Maharaj. So like that the Supreme Lord, He is uh, always protecting the devotees, even though the devotees sometimes seem to undergo some suffering in this material world. So, devotees' life is in Krishna's hands. This we should remember. Devotees' life is in Krishna's hands. For those who are fully surrendered to Krishna. What about those who don't surrender to Krishna or are not able to surrender to Krishna completely? For them, Krishna is advising that if you are not fully able to surrender to me, then you approach my pure devotee and surrender to my devotee. What's the difference? Devotees are more merciful than Krishna. What does Krishna say? Sarva dharman parityajya mamekam sharanam raja. Krishna puts a condition that you fully uh, surrender to me completely, me alone, after having given up all varieties of dharma. That means all your duties, all your obligations, everything you give up and fully surrender to me. Now that is not easy for everyone, not easily feasible for everyone. Whereas when it comes to approaching a pure devotee of Krishna, then the devotee being very, very merciful, will consider that here is a person who is not able to surrender to Krishna by giving up all the duties and obligations. Then what is the way out? So then, the pure devotee makes a plan, a program, that you accept to follow some very simple uh, practice of bhakti. Uh, some practice of bhakti you begin. Under the guidance of the pure devotee, you begin practice of bhakti. At the time you begin the practice, you are not fully surrendered. You still have got some obligations, some duties, some attachments, some weakness. Doesn't matter. But under the guidance of the pure devotee, you practice bhakti and you make progress in bhakti. Now that progress is not dependent on your uh, ability to actually follow. It is totally dependent on the mercy of the pure devotee. That is his mercy. That in spite of so many faults, 
so many shortcomings just like we are chanting hare krishna chanting of hare krishna is very easy and if we chant properly we can make immediate advancement in krishna consciousness but our chanting is so much faulty so many mistakes can be pointed out in our way of chanting because which progress is very 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 slow if you simply take up chanting like that according to what shastras are telling sometimes we tell people when you are at least when you are in difficulty you say hare krishna that hare krishna also at the time of difficulty they will not remember to tell hare krishna ayyo amma appa so many things will come out but they will not say hare krishna see the unfortunate condition of people in this material world it's a fact you will read in the bhagavatam indra was uh, actually uh, he committed a very 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 big uh, uh, sinful activity killing one brahmana Hmm? faultless brahmana then he realized his mistake and then he realized what is the kind of sinful reaction he has to suffer then he tried to escape and he went all over the universe searching for some shelter and somewhere he was hiding in some holy place and after hiding for some time then he realized oh the sinful reaction is not going to leave me then something else i have to do now indra he is a devotee of krishna but he forgets about krishna bhakti everything when he is preoccupied with this whole business of killing brahmana and then uh, the uh, subsequent suffering he has to undergo as sinful everything he is absorbed in that he is not thinking if i simply take shelter of krishna krishna will very easily protect me very easily save me is not thinking like that so coming back to my point we are not able to chant hari krishna even properly many times we don't even remember to chant and even if we remember to chant sometimes we don't chant properly so if we chant under the shelter of the spiritual master the pure devotee spiritual vast then under his protection under his shelter according to his guidance we will be able to uh, make progress in spite of our uh, faults and as we progress then our quality of chanting improves and then one day we will come to the standard of pure chanting and that chanting will be the uh, cause for our completely becoming purified and in that purified state we can directly surrender fully to krishna it's possible when we are purified but the purification itself is not easy it's very 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 difficult after purification to remain pure is even more difficult in bhakti purification is very easy but to remain pure is something more difficult 
It is just like people ask, if I go to Ganga and take a bath, all my sins will be washed away? The answer is yes. 100% yes. Anybody, everybody, any human being. Any human being. Taken human birth on this earth planet, then this is the mercy of the Lord. If you want to become free from sinful reactions, go to the Ganga, take bath. Finished, over. All your reactions are finished. But then after coming out, can you remain free from sinful activity? Is a question you have to ask. The sinful tendency will not go away. How did you, in the first place, how did you get the sinful reactions? Because in the past you did sinful activities. Why did you do sinful activities? Because you have sinful tendency. What is that sinful tendency? The tendency to enjoy materially. So as long as desire for material enjoyment is there in your heart, you will not stop sinning. And if you don't stop sinning, there is no freedom from sinful reactions. Any number of times you take bath in the Ganga, there is no use. So, what is important is, we have to stop sinful activity completely. Yesham tu antagatam papam. Now, how is that possible? How can we completely stop all sinful activities? We have to give up this desire for material enjoyment. So, these are all very nicely explained in the Bhagavad Gita and in very great detail in the Bhagavatam. In the life of so many persons. Bhagavatam gives uh, examples. Bhagavad Gita, just the principles are described in brief. There are no examples mentioned. Uh, case studies are not there in the, Bhagav in the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavatam gives so many examples of great devotees. And even those demons who did not follow what was there, in spite of doing so much tapasya, what was Hiranyakashipu's uh, achievement? He only became more and more demoniac. So, everything is explained in the scriptures very nicely. And if you follow the Shastra, under proper guidance, because Shastra also is not easy to follow. You require guidance, practical guidance of a pure devotee spiritual master. That's why we have what is called as Ashraya program. Next Sunday, 27th of May, we have this Ashraya program where devote, somebody is interested, serious about spiritual life, can take shelter of Srila Prabhupada before taking Diksha, before becoming a formally initiated disciple of Prabhupada, one should take shelter of Prabhupada. Taking shelter means agreeing to follow at least some simple instructions. Simple instruction. Prabhupada says, chant Hare Krishna. So if you agree to even chant Hare Krishna every day, 108 times, you can take shelter of Prabhupada. Then gradually you have to actually have a plan to give up this business of sinful activity in your daily life. Our life is filled with sinful activities. Now some people will say, no, no, I am a very pious person. I don't uh, perform any sinful activities. At least knowingly I don't do. But then we are so much in ignorance that we don't even know what is sin. We don't even know what is sin. Vikarma. Prabhupada explains in the Bhagavad Gita. Anything we do which is against our own 
ultimate self interest is called sinful at one level sinful activities are considered like telling lies hurting others cheating others this is one level of understanding what is sin but even a pious person who has given up all such bad activities and is only performing good activities still if the person is still having desire for some material enjoyment just like the devatas the devatas are pious persons but they still have so much desire for enjoyment material enjoyment and because of their strong desire for material enjoyment even though they don't want to do any sinful activity some or the other they became implicated in sin you see so giving up all these plans and desires for enjoyment material enjoyment in kali yuga material enjoyment is particularly through four activities meat eating intoxication gambling illicit sex so give up this these four activities oh in kali yuga it's so difficult for people to give up these four activities so very difficult in earlier yugas it was very easy for at least pious people to avoid these four activities very easy but in kali yuga even pious people have difficulty in giving up these four activities oh we should not even take coffee tea this is what they ask we tell no intoxication so yeah yeah prabhu i don't take any alcohol any beer all these i don't take Uh, then we say no no you should not take all that that is very good you don't take but you should also not take coffee tea oh coffee i cannot give up but why you consider coffee as intoxicant that will be the next question with a person is having difficulty or unable to give up especially south indians south indians they cannot understand why we consider coffee as intoxicant it's not what we consider it is what the laws of god this is all according to laws of god this is not some man made iskon made laws no this is not what is very difficult to give up these four things meat eating people say oh i am vegetarian but if we tell don't eat something that contains onion garlic oh that i cannot give up but then they will say oh but onion garlic is also plant it is not animal food why we should give up that next question will come so like this it's very very difficult in kali yuga so prabhu pad very mercifully he is teaching us that you start chanting hare krishna it doesn't matter somebody is drinking coffee or eating onion garlic whatever you start chanting hare krishna every day in whatever condition you are but under the guidance of prabhu pad under the shelter of prabhu then you will see how you'll be able to follow very easily the other principles for making progress prabhupad made hippies give up so many bad habits which generally indians don't have uh, the westerners so many bad habits some of them they had but when they came under the shelter of prabhupad then they were able to and they started chanting hari krishna 
then they gave up so many bad habits all the bad habits so it's possible under the shelter protection and guidance of a pure devotee spiritual master it is possible for anybody proper went and preached in africa hmm? remote places south america some remote places in this world where the people are very very culturally very backward according to our vedic culture very backward a samskruta mlechas yavanas this is the asamskrita people uncultured according to vedic uh, scriptures so even them propa simply made them chant hari krishna that's all and take some prasadam and this is all based on shastra sevon mukhe hi jigvadau bhakti devotional service begins with the tongue tongue has got two functions to vibrate and to taste so propa said vibrate and chant hari krishna and taste krishna prasadam that's all and then they became nice devotees under the shelter guidance and protection of shrila propa so same thing is available even now even the propa is physically not present but by his uh, mercy it is still available anybody can take shelter of prabhupa and agree to do two things what is that chant hari krishna and start uh, taking prasadam and then beginning with that small beginning you can make uh, progress very quickly to come to the standard of purely chanting hari krishna and becoming fully purified and remaining on the purified platform to actually become first class devotee it's possible for everyone it is possible everyone it's possible so this is uh, the mercy of the pure devotee so krishna has made arrangement that you approach the pure devotee even though you'll be unable to uh, follow krishna's instruction directly you approach the pure devotee and through the mercy of the pure devotee you can actually very easily uh, become free from sinful reactions end all this suffering i'll stop here kantara shrimad bhagavatam ki ja shila prabhupad ki ja